Hi, my name's Abe, and I'm going to tell you all about stationary points. So there's various kinds of stationary points that we're going to go through, and also, at the end, I'll go through an example of how you might go about finding some stationary points. So first off, what are they? Stationary points occur at f dashed of x equals 0. So i.e. 0 gradient. Yeah? So they're just points on your graph f of x where the gradient is 0. I thought I'd just highlight that in green. So getting onto it, there's various kinds of stationary points and they all look very different thankfully. So there's this kind. This is called a maximum. So you see that the graph sort of hits a maximum at A, right? So what's going on at the maximum? At the maximum, if you were to draw a, gra uh, a tangent, you'll see that the tangent looks like this. The tangent is completely flat. And so we say that at this point, we have zero gradient, right? The gradient is zero. Pretty simple. Okay, so this is a maximum. In fact, you could call it a local maximum because you don't know what other parts of the graph are doing. This might not be the highest point on a graph. So that's a local maximum. And what's going on here is that the, the, the tangent, right? If you were to draw tangents sort of all along this curve, you're going to see that um, sort of to the left of the curve, you'll, you'll have a tangent that's kind of positive, right? To the right, like here, you're going to have a tangent that's kind of negative. So positive and negative gradients. So you see that for a maximum, the tangent goes from positive to negative, no, to positive to neutral, then to negative. So you can go through this kind of thinking with each one of the stationary points I'm going to draw here. So another kind of stationary point is just the upside down version of that and it's called a minimum or a local minimum. right? And the minimum looks the opposite of the maximum and indeed it is. So at a minimum you see what's going on, right? So first up your gradient is negative. And then as you approach your point where it's actually at a minimum, you'll see that the gradient hits zero. Just here. Yep. Yeah. So that's your point of zero gradient. And then further along to the right, you see that the gradient now becomes positive. So on a minimum, it goes from negative, neutral, then positive. Okay, so there's two basic kinds, and there's a third kind. There's a third kind. And it looks, it's a little bit trickier, it looks a bit like this. Alright, and our stationary point happens here. So this thing, this strange shape, is called a stationary point of inflection. And what's really going on is that you see that we can we can do our little gradient analysis again that to the left of it it's positive. The gradient's positive. Now again at our point the gradient is zero, right? So it's a stationary point. But further along to the right you'll see that the gradient becomes positive again. So it goes positive, zero, positive. So that's a stationary point of inflection. And obviously there's, there's also negative versions of that where it goes negative, zero, negative. And that would just look something like this. So just the opposite. No big deal. So yeah. So along here, you, see you have your stationary points going on. And so it can go negative, 
neutral, negative, or positive, neutral, positive. Okay, so they're the three kinds that we have, right? So, in a lot of questions, they'll ask you to find a stationary point and then go about uh, telling them what is what exactly this stationary point is. And so, just a quick review. Um, at a maximum, we have positive gradient, then zero gradient, then negative gradient. At a minimum, we do the opposite. Negative gradient, zero gradient, positive gradient. Now, at a point of inflection, we do positive gradient, zero gradient, and then positive gradient. Or, the process in reverse, if you have the red line, it goes negative gradient, zero gradient, negative gradient. Simple, right? Okay. So, let's run through an example of finding some stationary points. And we're going to go back to our first point up here. It happens at f dash of x equals zero. So, let's run through an example. For example, let's find stationary points of f of x equals, I'm going to do a cubic, x minus 3, 2x squared plus 13x minus 1. There. Sorry, I wrote a bit into that part. So this is our example. Now, I've been really nice to you. I haven't just given you a straight cubic. I've sort of semi-factorized it for you. So the first thing you want to do is, well, be able to dif di differentiate this function, right? And in order to, di to differentiate it, I'm going to expand. So I'm just going to write f of x again. So f of x is equal to, now if you sort of look at what's in the brackets, you can collect like terms. So looking for cubics, you know that you have um, x times 2x squared. So you're just simply going to get 2x cubed, right? Now looking for, looking for x squared, you see you have minus 3 times 2x squared, which gives negative 6x squared, and this, as well as, as well as, um, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, as well as x times 13x, which gives 13x squared. So 13 minus 6 is going to give you 7x squared. Moving on to x's, you can do 3 times negative so negative 3 times 13x gives you negative 39x and then minus 1 times x so minus 40x and the last part the constants minus 3 times minus 1 gives you plus 3 simple right so if that's f of x then f dashed of x just go ahead differentiate that you're going to get 6x squared plus 14x minus 40. Cool. And so you want, we want f dashed of x equals 0. Right? So let's equate our derivative to 0. 0 equals 6x squared plus 14x minus 40. And I know that I can divide both sides by 2, comfortably. 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. And what I'm going to do is put this into two brackets. You know that one of them is going to be 3x, the other one's going to be x. I'm going to guess that the minus 20 comes from a 4 and a 5, or well, one of them will be minus. And remember how many x's we have. We have plus 7x's. And it turns out that if you're able to put, uh, let's say, plus 4 here and negative 5 here, 
you see this works out. 3x times 4 gives you 12, minus 5x gives you 7x. So we've managed to uh, factorize this. So, so, so that means we can see where f dashed equals 0, right? So we can see that f dashed of x will equal 0 when x equals minus 4 or 5 on 3. Okay, so that's just solving a quadratic. Not very difficult. Okay, so you've, you've found the x coordinates. These are the x coordinates of your stationary points. And what you'll see is that that's not quite enough. A lot of students like to stop here. You can't stop here. You have to go further. Because remember that these stationary points, these stationary points, they are points on f of x. That's not clear to everyone. But these stationary points are points on f of x. So, you kind of need to go back and plug these values into f of x. So you need to go ahead and find f of minus 4 as well as f of 5 on 3. And if you use a calculator, you'll see that f of minus 4 is 147, f of 5 on 3 is negative 944 over 27. And so, put these in, your stationary point, the first one is minus 4, 1, 4, 7, and your second one is going to be 5 on 3, and then negative 9, 4, 4 over 27, like so. Sorry, my 9s and 4s look very similar. Okay, so there's your two stationary points. My question now is, what are their natures? Is, are they what? Maximums? Minimums? Points of inflection? Now if you know your functions and you know your knowledge, you, you know your cubics, you'll know that you can probably get this just from looking at the, looking at the function, right? So in the question, the big clue is this part, 2x cubed. 2 is positive. What do you know about a positive cubic? Positive cubics all look like this. So you know this is a positive cubic, right? Positive cubics looks like this. So that means you have maximum here, minimum there. So you have a maximum to the left and minimum to the right. So you see that at x equals minus 4, that's going to be a maximum or a local. Local maximum is here. And x equals 5 on 3 is going to be a local minimum. So there you go. Stationary points. You can find them. Pretty, pretty simple. Let f dashed of x equals 0 find the uh, solve for x and then plug those x values back into your original f of x and that's it i hope you've enjoyed yourself i'll see you next time